Okay, okay. Okay. Last week we ended on page 141 of the Go Show, um, the strategy of the Lotus Sutra. On page, it starts on page 131. So we're 10 pages into that on page 141, where it says sharing the same commitment as the mentor in the right hand second column. However, for the continuity of starting to read the last part, I'm going to back up a little more as I've done before. So let's start with um, what he's saying in the last sentence on page 140 of the, of the next to the last paragraph. You'll, you'll see it. The last paragraph on 140 starts with, it is the heart that is important. I want to go one sentence above that as a lead into that sentence, okay? So I'm going to start reading now. Is everybody ready? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so military, uh, pardon me, power, military prowess, wealth, fame, and other external trappings do not automatically translate into victory, nor do they guarantee happiness. We all know that from practical examples in, in daily life. He continues on the page of one, on page 140 at the end of on, on a second column. It is the heart that is important. This is Nitrin Daishonin's ultimate conclusion. Happiness is not determined by educational background, titles, social status, organizational position, or age. It all comes down to one's heart and mind. A heart can be clouded by darkness or ignorance. Or it can shine brightly as an entity of the mystic law. That means it's delusion. It can either live in delusion or it can live in, in, in Buddhahood, right? right? Free of all such ignorance. A deluded mind is trapped in a descending cycle of negativity and misery with the sufferings of birth and death only intensifying because you don't know why. In contrast, an enlightened mind, one that shines as an entity of the mystic law, that means actually each and sons and folks, carves out a solid ascending path of optimism and hope, having the power to transform that which is negative into something positive. And again, I said last week, that, that's describing joy, the state of joy, which is what we practice for and what we experience as people in actually each and sons and the potential for both of these states of mind exists within us, right? Buddhahood or delusion. Ignorance and enlightenment are one in essence. That's why anybody can go from one to the other, all right? From, from ignorance to enlightenment. Therefore, the entity of a mind clouded by the illusions of the innate darkness of life. What are the illusions of the innate illusions of a, a dark, pardon me, Clouded by the illusions of the innate darkness of life. What is that talking about? Therefore, the entity of a mind clouded by the illusions of the innate darkness of life. Somebody, 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 <laughs> yeah, in delusion, <laughs> right, right, exactly, okay. can come to shine as a sparkling jewel of the essential nature of phenomena, the true aspect of reality. Okay, do you understand? We can all make the flip from being common mortals to Buddhas. Mm -hmm. Okay? It's, it's, they're not two different things. It's not something that we have to achieve. It's a flip. It's a state of mind is what he's qualifying here. Mm -hmm. Okay? He's saying uh, we can transform ignorance into enlightenment, thereby changing poison into medicine. Because that's really what that term refers to. That is why the law is described as mystic or wonderful. Because this can happen in a single moment. You're the determinate factor, not anything else outside of you. A mind that is broken free of the fetters of ignorance, in other words, one that has achieved actual Ichin and Sanzen, is as vast as the sky and as free as a soaring eagle. Further, it is as dignified and majestic as the colossal treasure tower in the Lotus Sutra, freely delighting in the law and abounding with absolute peace of mind. It is filled with the Buddha wisdom that enables us to rise above and overcome all ills and illusions. It's the mind of faith. It's the same mind as Nichiren. Do you understand? The power of the mind is truly unfathomable. It cannot be understood. A subtle change in one's heart can change everything. The practice that lets us draw forth this power is chanting, not just studying or understanding, but getting in front of the Gohonzon and activating our Buddha nature in the way it's supposed to be activated. 
Nam Yoho Renge, uh, and chanting Nam Yoho Renge Kyo for ourselves and others, because again, obviously, this can't be just for you, or it won't occur. So Jigyo Keita is always, always part of the last part of those sentences. Nietzsche writes, this mind, this mind that is beyond comprehension constitutes the core teaching of the sutras and treatises. And one who is awake to and understands this mind is called a thus come one, a Buddha. All right? He's saying, making full use of this power of the mind. So what does he say there in that sentence, in just that part of it? Making full use of this power of the mind. This full use. What's he talking about? This full use. This full use pertains to the description in the previous paragraph. This mind that is beyond comprehension constitutes the core teachings of the sutras and treatises. And one who is awake to and understands this mind is called a thus come one, a Buddha making full use of this power of the mind. So what is he saying there? Mm -hmm. By being the Buddha in your present form, by achieving actual each and every So what does he say by saying that? You all can do it. You all have it within you. Mm -hmm. This is just a matter of revealing it. This is a matter of finding it. it is isn't a matter of discovering it. It's a matter of bringing it forth. That only comes from faith and chanting to the Gohanza. Understand that, right? Yeah. So making full use, because he just said, the practice that lets us draw forth this power is chanting nam yo ho rin kyo for ourselves and others, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then that's when he describes you as the Buddha, right? Mm -hmm. And then he's saying make full use of this. He's saying, making full use of this power of the mind, of being the Buddha, of being one of the same mind of ne as Nichiren, is the key to victory in terms of both our daily lives, because there's no separation from daily life, and the, the religious or philosophical aspect of being Nichiren Buddhists. Right? right? They are the same thing. That's what I said last week. Uh, and our eternal existence. Making full use of this power of the mind is the key to victory in terms of both our lives and our eternal existence. Do you understand? Mm. So what's he saying there? This mind will carry the day now in this lifetime, and it will always be there for you in every other lifetime if you can achieve this state in this lifetime and maintain it to the last moment of your life, right? Yeah. So you see, this is none other than the strategy of the Lotus Sutra. That's what the strategy of the Lotus Sutra is. Everybody with me? Yeah. Okay, now we start from where we left off last week. Uh, sharing the same commitment as the mentor. Highlights. When we single-mindedly chant nam myoho renge with faith in the Gohonzon, it is like facing a mirror and seeing our towering life state of Buddhahood clearly reflected back at us. But what did that just say? Let's go over it again. When we single-mindedly chant. So what kind of daimoku is that? Pardon? Say it louder. Doubt-free faith. It's, it's, it's doubt-free faith, but it's, it's the kind of faith that perceives there being no separation between you and the Gohonza. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. And it says, when we single-mindedly chant this kind of, what we're doing, when we're single-mindedly chant, we're creating Kyochi Myogo. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? This isn't casual Daimoku or distracted Daimoku. This is seeking spirit. Let me, be, let me, let me bring forth my original state Daimoku. This is faith in the teaching that says, I am the Buddha, Daimoku. This is already understanding that you're the Buddha in front of the Gohonzon. That's when you chant this way, mm. all right? Whenever you chant this way, by the way, you are the Buddha, whether you're thinking that or not, mm. okay? When we single-mindedly chant nam myoho ren kyo with faith in the Gohonzon, that means we're in front of the Gohonzon and we're chanting with faith, mm. it is like facing a mirror and seeing our towering life state of Buddhahood clearly reflected back at us because what is the power that's being emanated in that process? The power. The power. What power? Where's the power coming from? Within you. Well, yes, it's coming from you. And that's why it's reflected back at you. What's a reflection? It's an image of you. Right? It's not a bring forth some Buddha power out of outer space or some weird shit like that. <laughs> right? And so where must this always exist? In it you. must reside in you. Mm -hmm. Is there any separation then between you and Nam Yoho Renge Kyo? Yeah. 
then can there be any separation between you and Nietzsche and Daishonin? No. All right? It is the heart that is important, means having the heart of faith to actively propagate the mystic law, the heart of a disciple to actively support the mentor, and the heart of a lion to actively speak out for truth and justice. Does everybody know, understand all those? That? So it's not a casual thing that brings this forth, is it? It says, it is the heart that is important, means having the heart of faith to actively propagate the mystic law. So how do you actively propagate the mystic law? What's the most important way to actively propagate the mystic law? Okay. Not only to chant, but it is to achieve actual each and sons and to be the Buddha in your daily life. That's the best way to actively propagate the mystic law, is to show the proof of actual fact in your life. That when you say, I am the Buddha, people go, whoa, maybe you are. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. All right. And he says, he says, so that's one. He says, the heart of a disciple to actively support the mentor. What does that mean? To understand yourself as a bodhisattva of the earth. You've taken a vow. Mm -hmm. Okay? Widespread propagation is why you came to earth and were born in this lifetime. Do you understand? Because you're the Buddha. There's a reason. It's not by accident. Mm -hmm. All right? And the heart of a lion to actively speak out for truth and justice. Because you know you're going up against the, you're going against the stream. You're, you're swimming upstream. Why? Because you're a carp that turns into dragons. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. That's why. If it was streaming, it was going downstream, any fish can go downstream. Okay? Only carp to turn into dragons. That's what it's talking about. All right? So, continuing with the lecture. Nietzsche and Daishonin actualized. Actualized. That's why we call it actual Ichin and Sunset. Right. Okay? Actualized this ultimate true potential of the heart and mind, which are the same thing in the context of how it's being used here. <coughs> and he inscribed the Gohonzon, the object of devotion, as a direct expression of the vast and boundless state of life he achieved. Mm -hmm. Everybody's with me? Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. Consequently, when we single-mindedly chant nam myoho renge with faith in the Gohonzon, as he just mentioned a moment ago, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. It is like facing a mirror and seeing our inner universe. The towering life state of Buddhahood clearly reflected back at us, reflected. In other words, it's emanating from us, right? We can manifest in our own lives the same courageous life state as uh, of the Lion King, just as the Daishona did. So what did he just say? When we do those things, we can, in, we can manifest in our own lives the same life state as Nichiren. Nichiren a Buddha? Yes, obviously. Yeah. So what did he just say then? So are you. Right? right? As long as you do the things necessary for that to be real rather than theoretical. Okay? Nichiren, and, and this is why I was like so happy to read this part. So, Nichikan Shoni. All right, which means, again, this understanding that we're about now to go over now is not available to anybody that's not in that lineage that I've already explained to you. Starts with NIKKO and then goes up to Nietzsche Khan with his clarification, personal law, Buddhism, the sewing, the fact that none of the other schools were aware of this teaching prior to him. Okay, prior to Nietzsche Khan. Do you understand? All right, so he says, Nietzsche Khan shown in the 26th high priest who is known as a great restorer of Nietzsche and Buddhism writes, this is so important. Try and grasp these words and take them to the core of your life and don't forget them. Okay. Through the power of the mystic law, mm -hmm. okay, through the, through the power of what it actually is that's unfathomable to you, that you cannot perceive or conceive of with a mortal mind, mm -hmm. common mortal mind. Okay, through the power of the mystic law, we manifest the life of Nichiren within us. Okay? He also says, when we believe in the object of devotion with our whole heart, now that's Mugi Washin, right? Right. With our whole heart, the object of devotion itself becomes our heart, mm. our mind. Same thing, right? Mm. Do you understand? Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Therefore, the world of Buddhahood is itself the nine worlds we live in. 
okay, as living beings. When we single-mindedly, once again, when we chant as Buddhas, nam myoho renge kyo our lives in their entirety. What does that mean? That means nothing's left out. That means all the good and all the bad. All the light and all the dark. Okay, everything about ourselves takes on its true aspect. Do you understand? He says, when we single-mindedly chant nam myoho renge kyo our lives in their entirety become the object of devotion. So he just now qualified all of the things that you've heard loosely stated about the Gohonza and his reflection of you. It's really you. It's Nichiren Daishonin. I said a few weeks ago, as far as I'm concerned, the Gohonza is the life of Nichiren Daishonin. That's all described right there within that single paragraph. All right? Please try and understand what he's saying there, really, from a standpoint of not something that's... Um, uh, 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 a premise of, 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 of theology, but something that's the core understanding and perception in your life when you get in front of the Gohonzon. The Daishonin declares this Gohonzon also is found only in the two characters for faith, because it's the only way you're going to be able to achieve what I just discussed. Okay? In the passage, it is the heart that is important. Heart can be interpreted as faith. All right? A heart of true and genuine faith, okay, which what is he saying there? He says, when you nail it, when you're doing what I'm really talking about and not just doing it from a theoretical standpoint, when you perceive what I'm mm -hmm. saying and you're doing it, a heart of true and genuine faith <laughs> is an unsurpassed treasure. It contains within it all the treasures of the universe because that's how valuable your life is, right? It's eternal. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. In the strategy of the Lotus Sutra, as in other writings at the bottom of page 142, first column, in the strategy of the Lotus Sutra, as in other writings, the Daishonin emphasizes one important po point regarding our attitude in faith, that we approach our Buddhist prayer and all our efforts with the same spirit as the mentor. How could he, he could have said this the same way. He emphasizes one important point regarding our attitude and faith that we approach our Buddhist prayer and all our efforts with the same mind as Nichiren. Do you understand? Okay? It's a very discernible difference. It's like a wannabe and an actualized. Okay? We can discern this message in the following passage. No matter how earnestly Nichiren prays for you, if you lack faith, it will be like trying to set fire to wet tender. Mm -hmm. In another letter to Shijo Kingo, the Daishonin also warns, if lay believers and their teachers pray with differing minds, their prayers will, not be, will be as futile as trying to kindle a fire on water. All right? Further, in a letter he sent from Minobu to the lay nun Sinichi on Sado Island, right? Sinichi and, and Abutsubo, right? Mm -hmm. Nichiren praises her ongoing seeking spirit toward his teachings despite the distance separating them. Though you remain in Sado, we already read this from a couple weeks ago, I think. Mm -hmm. Though you remain in Sado, your heart has come to this province. It is the heart that is important. He warmly encourages her, telling her that even though she is far away, her heart or faith has reached him, and that they are and that they share a profound connection. They are actually inseparable. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. Everybody understands, right? Yeah. Our sincerity of heart is the most important thing. He assures her. So again, it's. How seriously are you approaching this? You know, are you practicing to be part of an organization of people that call you up and say, can you come and you go and everybody's nice to you and maybe they serve some refreshments or something and it's an entertaining evening out? Or are you practicing to actually attain Buddhahood in your present form, which is that I've shown is qualified, which President Kata is qualifying, is the key to why you should start chanting in the first place. That's the path that you embarked upon when you received Gohonzon in the first place, even though you didn't understand that at the time. Mm -hmm. So he's saying, 
One's sincerity of heart is the most important thing, he assures her. Uh, pardon me. He says, in this passage, it is the heart that is important. Heart can be also interpreted as the spirit of sharing the same heart as the mentor, the same mind as Nietzsche. The Daishonin writes, those with the heart of a lion king are sure to attain Buddhahood. Why? Go back to the highlights I just mentioned here. Okay? The heart, because you have... Faith to actively propagate the mystic law. You have the heart of a disciple to actively support the mentor and the heart of a lion to actively speak out for uh, truth and justice. All right? The heart of faith to actively propagate the mystic law. The heart of a disciple to actively support the mentor and the heart of a lion to actively speak out for truth and justice. These are the most powerful weapons and strategies we have for achieving peace and securing happiness throughout the three existences of past, present, and future. This, Nietzsche says, is the strategy of the Lotus Sutra. Because when we do those things, it, ha it, 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 it it's not just for us. Right? It cannot. It can, you cannot do those three things and, and do them just for yourself. Mm -hmm. If you do those three things, you are doing Jigyo Keita. Period. Do you understand? So he's saying, the next... The strategy of the Lotus Sutra, faith that brings about absolute victory. Everybody understood what I said there, right? Mm -hmm. Highlights. The strategy of the Lotus Sutra refers to faith in the Gohonzon. Two, basing ourselves on the Gohonzon, we can overcome all that hinders us on the path to attaining Buddhahood. All right? Cowardice pre prevents us from seeing the truth and can cause minor hardships to seem like huge immovable obstacles. Courage indicates the most robust, healthy spirit deriving from our inherent Buddha nature, which allows us to vanquish our fundamental darkness. I've been practicing 45 years. How do you get that courage? By understanding the teaching? It's not just for us. No. Where? What? By chanting. Only. Only. That courage only comes from embracing the Gohonza. That's not being brave and being willing to suffer. That's not some sort of like, you know, he hit me with chains and let me do my pen, pen, penance, okay? Courage indicates the most robust, healthy spirit deriving from our inherent Buddha nature. Our inherent Buddha nature. Courage indicates the most robust, healthy spirit deriving from our inherent Buddha nature, which allows us to vanquish our fundamental darkness. What is that saying then? What vanquishes your fundamental darkness? Yes, faith in the Gohonzon and chanting Daimoku, but what is it actually? The emergence of our Buddha nature is what vanquishes fundamental darkness. Now, those other things is what allowed that Buddha nature to emerge. Mm -hmm. But the Buddha nature emerging is what squeezes out the fundamental darkness from having any room on the stage. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? Because you can't get rid of fundamental darkness completely, right? No. No, you cannot. It's a part of, it's a part of life. It's the opposite of enlightenment. You can't be enlightened without fundamental darkness hanging on the backside. Uh -huh. Right? So he says... In its original sense, the term strategy refers to battle tactics, the science of warfare, or martial arts. Considered more broadly, it can be taken to mean a method for achieving better results in all areas. That means all areas. Even having personal relationships. All areas. Everything you want for your happiness you already have the power to go seize if you'll take action. There's nothing outside of your ability to be. Mm -hmm. Nothing. Okay? He's saying it can be taken to mean a method for achieving better results in all areas, for leading a victorious life of value creation. The strategy of the Lotus Sutra refers to faith in the Gohonzon. It is faith that battles ignorance and delusion, breaks through negative karma, and wins without fail through confident prayer and the boundless wisdom and courage that flow forth as a result. Everybody with me? You understand clearly what he's saying here, right? These are a bunch of really true, really deep things. 
I hope you'll go back and reread this. Hmm. No matter what the situation, when we base ourselves on the mystic law, the ultimate law of the universe, we will never be deadlocked. The unparalleled power of the mystic law enables us to overcome all obstacles or enemies that hinder us on the path to attaining Buddhahood. Nietzsche and Daishon incites the passage from the Medicine, Medicine King chapter of the Lotus Sutra, all others who bear you enmity or malice will likewise be wiped out. You don't even have to worry about them. These words indicate one example of the immense good fortune that comes from embracing and propagating the Lotus Sutra. Having the ability to defeat all obstacles and negative forces through faith in the mystic law is the power of the strategy of the Lotus Sutra. Hence, Nietzsche indicates that the strategy of the Lotus Sutra is in fact the essence of the strategy and swordsmanship that allowed Shijo Kingo to emerge unscathed and victorious from his encounter with enemies. Does everybody remember last week what we were covering? We were talking about why did he make it through this ambush? Was it because he was such a great swordsman? And he's talking about, no, your fortune can all be gone. And when it's gone, it's gone, brother. There are guys that were better asses than you, and they all got defeated because when they ran out of their fortune, it was gone. Now, I'm showing you how to make fortune constantly so you never run out of fortune. So he's saying again, hence, Nietzsche indicates that the strategy of Lotus Sutra is in fact the essence of what allowed him to be such a good swordsman. There is no separation between being whatever you are in daily life and being the Buddha. Do you understand? All right. Mm -hmm. All right. So he's saying the foundation, the last little paragraph here on 143, the foundation of all of our efforts, endeavors, and challenges, whether in the realm of staying healthy, even something like that, mm -hmm. leading a fulfilling life, having a family, being a dad, whatever you want to be, man. And, or showing actual proof of winning trust in the community and society is the strategy of the Lotus Sutra. Or, in other words, strong faith. Okay? Mugi washing, baby. At the end of this letter to Shijo Kingo, the Daishonin writes, by the way, hi, Andre. At the end of this letter to Shijo Kingo, the Daishonin writes, have profound faith. A coward cannot have any of his prayers answered. Mm -hmm. So unless you're willing to go and sit and do what he just said to do, if you don't have the cojones to do that, you're mm -hmm. not going to win the way he's saying you will win if you do. Okay, so don't confuse the two. Mm -hmm. A half-hearted effort is not going to give you the heart of the lotus, of a strategy of the Lotus Sutra. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. So he's saying, cowardice shuts the eyes. This was the insight of the 19th century American Renaissance philosopher Ralph Waldo Emerson. Once again, he's using, he's using someone other than a Buddhist to qualify a truth that is contained within Buddhism. Cowardice prevents us from seeing the truth, from seeing things as they are. Because we don't want to. Because we don't want it. We want an easier path. Mm. We blame anything else than to have to take on the difficulty that's required to be victorious in every circumstance. It can cause even a minor hardship to seem like a huge immovable obstacle and make even the door to a solution appear instead like a thick wall. Courage is therefore crucial. Emerson says something very interesting. It is plain that there is no separate essence called courage, no cup or cell in the brain, no vessel in the heart containing drops or atoms that make or give this virtue. But courage is the right or healthy state of every man or living being when he is free to do that which is constitutional to him to do. It is directness, the instant performing of that which he ought do what you, you know, doing what you're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. Doing what you're supposed to do. That's understanding the crucial moment and perceiving when you need to go reinforce the life state of the Buddha in your nine world existence. Mm -hmm. Keep it refreshed, keep it strong. In terms of Buddhism, courage indicates the soundest and most robust spirit 
that derives from our inherent Buddha nature, which could be described as our most, most healthy state. Mm -hmm. It means the fighting spirit. Mm -hmm. Get in front of that Gohonzana. Give it hell. It means the fighting spirit to vanquish our fundamental darkness. Those feelings that are making us feel that we're not the Buddha that day or in that moment. Mm -hmm. Rediscovering the confidence. Because it comes and goes. You know it. Everybody around this table knows it, right? Mm -hmm. You're not in the 10th world all the time. It is definitely a reflection of your relationship to the Gohonzon and what you're pursuing and, 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 and putting forth to the Gohonzon in that, at that time. Right? If it's every day, it's every day. If it's once a month, it's probably not that often. All right? Uh, and he says, it means the fighting spirit to vanquish our fundamental darkness and instantly reveal our enlightened Dharma nature. Like you're talking about, oh, you know, somehow the Daimoku just brought out all these feelings of appreciation and insight. You were, had a hard time not starting to cry out of what, nothing, right? Joy. Joy. For us. Courage means challenging the real life issues confronting us right where we are with the belief that we ourselves are, entity, are entities of the mystic law. So what did he just say there? He said it not to confuse you or freak you out, but what did he just say there? For us, courage means for us. What's it? Who's for us? Who's us? Who does? We. Right. Those of us that are listening to him give this lecture. Those that have the seeking spirit to understand what he's saying. Mm -hmm. For us, courage means challenge, challenging the real life issues confronting us right where we are. Mm -hmm. In other words, the, the courage is not understanding the doctrine of the philosophy. Mm -hmm. It's exactly. dealing with losing a loved one, losing your job, losing whatever challenge mm. is in front of you. This is where you prove you're the Buddha, not to be some brainiac dude that knows a bunch of stuff. Okay? It's from the proof of actual fact. Mm -hmm. All right? For us, courage means challenging the real life issues confronting us right where we are with the belief that we ourselves are the Buddha. That's what he's saying. He says, with the courage he says, confronting us right now with, with the belief that we ourselves are entities of the mystic law. We ourselves are the Buddha exactly as we are right now, not someday. No. Okay? This is the way. Being the Buddha in your daily life. This is the way to employ the strategy of the lowest, Lotus Sutra and construct an indestructible history of victory and glory. The only way, because only Buddhists can do that. Anybody but a Buddha is going to collapse under the pressure of the... Yeah, the devil is too powerful. You'll, you'll lose. I know too many people that have. Yes. As a young man working under Mr. Toda, I battled various hardships. Whenever I reached an impasse, I would chant nam myoho renge to break through. I would chant and challenge myself afresh. He's telling you to do this too. Determined to win victory for my mentor and for Kosen Rufu. That only means determined to win victory as a bodhisattva of the earth. A real bodhisattva of the earth. Not a name you take because you joined an organization. All right? And for Kosen Rufu. I, I fiercely pitted myself each day against one obstacle after another. And in the end, I triumphed over all adversity. For my mentor, for Kosa Rufu, when you strive with this strong resolve to reply to their mentor and contribute to widespread propagation, Kosa Rufu, they can bring forth their true full potential and ability. Mm. From this, from my personal experience, is the strategy of the Lotus Sutra. In order to realize Mr. Toda's vision, I exerted myself on the front lines of countless hard-fought battles, and as a result, I came to understand the true meaning of faith that brings absolute victory. Mm. During the 11 years that I served my mentor, I showed unequivocal proof of victory based on the strategy of the Lotus Sutra. This brought Mr. Toda great joy. The time has now come for me to entrust. The time has now come. The time has now come. I can't lead you guys forever and ever and ever. It's now for you, time for you to become the leaders. Mm -hmm. The time has now come for me to entrust this practical philosophy 
Not one based on a bunch of understandings that show everybody how smart you are. Okay? But one that takes your faith into your life as a daily part of the process of being the Buddha in the nine worlds. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? Yes. For certain victory to my genuine disciples. Why doesn't he just say SGI members? <laughs> because all SGI members are not automatically his genuine disciples. Right. Okay? His genuine disciples are pursuing this in a much different way. All right? Mm -hmm. The time has now come for me to entrust this practical philosophy for certain victory to my genuine disciples. Just as Mr. Toda called out 55 years ago, I call out to all the youth who are my true successors. My young friends, how will you accomplish Kosa Rufu? What are the challenges that lie before you? Where and how will you fight and win? Thank you. Okay. Yeah. okay, and now I'm going to squeeze in the true aspect of all phenomena. I was going to read... The full Go Show from next week, which is on lessening one's karmic uh, retribution. But after reading that, I think the most appropriate thing is for me to read this. Okay, so I'm just going to go off. I don't know how much time we got, but I'm going to do my best. Everybody knows this writing, right? Yeah. This is a writing by Rinbo. It's a very deep and profound uh, uh, Go Show. It's not that long. I should be able to read it. I'll read you the background anyhow. It's on page 383. Of, of volume one. Okay, I'm going to start with the background, which is on 387. You there, Derek? Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, good. Okay, here we go. Nietzsche and Daishonen wrote this letter to Sirenbo Nichi Joe uh, while at Ichinosawa on Sato Island in the fifth month of the tenth year of Brunei. For some reason, Sirimbo was also in exile on Sado, when, and, uh, where he had been converted by the Daishonin in the second month of 1272. A former Tendai priest, he already knew something about the true aspect of all phenomena. It was a fundamental concept of the Tendai school of Buddhism, which is what he was, that's what his background was. He could not, however, satisfactorily come to grips with this concept through Tentai's theory alone. So he asked the Daishonin for an explanation. The true aspect of all phenomena is the Daishonin's reply. Okay? Mm -hmm. Pretty deep question, pretty deep answer. Through compar though comparatively short, this document elucidates two important elements of the Daishonin's Buddhism. It was completed a month after Nietzsche and Daishonin wrote the object of devotion for observing the mind, in which he explained the Gohonsan, the object of devotion that can lead all people in the latter day of the law to enlightenment. The true aspect of all phenomena begins with a passage from the Expedient Means chapter, the heart of the theoretical teaching of Lotus Sutra, that implies that no phenomena, no phenomenon is in any way differing from the true aspect or Myoho Rengekyo, what I was just talking about a minute ago, what President Kate was just talking about ago, a minute ago. It, is all, it also implies that all the innumerable forms and realities that exist both concrete and abstract are manifestations of Myoho Rengekyo, of Nam Myoho Rengekyo. The Daishonin then explains the essence of the Lotus Sutra, Myoho Rengekyo, Nam Myoho Rengekyo, and its embodiment, the Gohonzon. This is the first element, the object of devotion in terms of the law. After clarifying the ultimate teaching of the Lotus Sutra, the Daishonin states that Bodhisattva's superior practices, the leader of the Bodhisattvas of the earth, will propagate that teaching and that he himself is carrying out that mission entrusted to that bodhisattva. In light of his own behavior and his fulfillment of the predictions in the Lotus Sutra, Nietzsche and Daishonin suggest that he himself is bodhisattva superior practices. A more profound interpretation, however, a more profound interpretation, one that he couldn't say himself at that time, identifies him as the Buddha of the latter day of the law, whose purpose was to establish the Gohonzon for the enlightenment of all people in the latter day. Thus, the true aspect of all phenomena also explains the object of devotion in terms of the person. This is the second element. Referring to both the person and the law, the Daishonin clarify, clarifies the fundamental object of devotion for the people of the latter day. He brings together the points he expounded in the opening of the eyes, completed in 1272, which focuses on the second element, and in the object of devotion for observing the mind, which focuses on the first element. Do you understand? This is a very profound gosho. 
The latter half of this letter explains to Sirembo that those who devote themselves to propagating the correct teaching in the same spirit as the Daishonin, of the same mind as Nitrin, are themselves bodhisattvas of the earth. The Daishonin predicts that Namyohor and Gekyo will spread widely in the future and concludes by setting forth the key elements of Buddhist practice in the latter day of the law, namely faith, practice, and study. Okay? The True Aspect of All Phenomena, written by Nitrin, page 383, volume 1 of the writings of Nitrin Daishon. In question, the expedient means chapter of the first volume of the Lotus Sutra states, the true aspect of all phenomena can only be understood and shared between Buddhas. This reality consists of the appearance nature, dot, 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 and their consistency from beginning to end. What does this passage mean, Sai Renbo asks. Answer. It means that all beings and environments in the ten worlds, from hell the lowest to Buddhahood the highest, are without exception manifestations of Myoho Rengekyo, entities of the mystic law. If there is an environment, living beings are bound to dwell there. The commentary states, living beings in their environments always manifest Myoho Rengekyo. Another says, the true aspect invariably manifests in all phenomena, and all phenomena invariably manifest in the ten factors. The ten factors invariably manifest in the ten worlds, and the ten worlds invariably manifest in life and its environment. Now that was a mouthful, but I've gone over that with you before. You should be able to break it down on your own. But he does say, a commentary, living beings and their environments always manifest. He says, the true aspect, okay, pardon me. And, and. Both the beings and the environment of the Avicii hell exist entirely within life of the, of the highest sa uh, sage, Buddha. And what is more, the life and the environment of Vairachana Buddha never transcend the lives of, the common, of common mortals. These explanations are precise and clear. Who could have doubts? Thus the entire realm of phenomena is no different than the five characters of Myoho Rengekyo. All right? He says, a commentary state. So he was just quoting Miolo, I believe, there. All right? He's saying, now, even the two Buddhas, Shakyamuni and many, many treasures, in performing the function of the benefit of the five characters of Myoho Rengekyo, manifested it themselves as the two Buddhas, and seated together in the treasure, treasure tower, nodded in mutual agreement. You, you understand what he's talking about, right? Mm -hmm. All right. No one but Nichiren has ever revealed teachings like these. So he's qualified. Nobody ever said anything like this before, by the way. And the reason they didn't, it was because it wasn't the fifth half millennium. It wasn't time yet. He says, Through, though Tentai, Myolo, and Dingyo knew about them in their hearts, they never put them into words. They went about their lives keeping this knowledge to themselves. And there was a good reason for this. The Buddha had not entrusted them with the task, and the time had not yet come, and they had not been the Buddha's disciples from the distant past. They weren't bodhisattvas of the earth, he's actually saying. All right? He says, only superior practices, boundless practices, and the other foremost leaders, right, the bodhisattvas of the earth he's talking about now, and guiding teachers among the bodhisattvas of the earth can not only appear during the first 500 years of the, law, of, of the latter day of the law and spread the five characters of Myoho Rengeku, the essence of all phenomena, but also give concrete form to the ceremony of the two Buddhas seated side by side in the treasure tower. The reason for this is what they, is what they are to spread and give concrete form to is none other than the teaching of the actual 3,000 realms in a single moment of life in the lifespan chapter of the essential teaching. God damn, was that powerful. Do you understand what he just said? Okay, let's just real quick. He says, the Buddha had not entrusted them with the task. The time had not yet come. So he's basically saying that only I could come because I'm now here in the fifth 500 year period, right? Mm -hmm. So then he goes though, he says, furthermore, he says, only the Bodhisattvas can not only appear but they're the only ones that could make the Gohonzon. So as the Gohonzon could not have appeared prior to my advent, mm -hmm. is what he's saying in that paragraph. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. He's saying, okay, and, and the essence of all phenomena, but also to give concrete form to the ceremony of the two Buddhas seated side by side in the treasure tower. That's what the Gohonzon is. 
giving form to that. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. The reason is what they are to spread and give concrete form to. Why could there never be a Gohanzan prior to me? It was not you could not time. achieve actual Ichin and Sanzen until me. Mm -hmm. You could not achieve actual Ichin and Sanzen until the correct teacher appeared in the fifth 500 year period. Mm -hmm. Impossible according to the sutras that Shakyamuni preached. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. This is cool stuff. He's saying so. That he says, he says, other than, of the actual 3,000 realms in a single moment of life. So actual Ichin and Sanzen is what he's talking about. And he's qualifying. Actual Ichin and Sanzen did not exist until me. Because I derived it from the depths of the 16th chapter. Okay? Mm -hmm. It wasn't on the surface like it is in the theoretical teaching that Tintai was able to abstract from and Miolo and Dingo were referring to. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, therefore, the two Buddhas, Shakyamuni and many treasures, are Buddhas who are functions of Myoho Rengekyo. They support the process that I'm now activating. Mm -hmm. They preceded me in order to leave teachings for me to qualify and, 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 and engage correctly. Do you understand? Do you understand? Mm -hmm. He's qualifying that. Therefore, the two Buddhas, Shakyamuni and many treasures, are Buddhas who are functions of Myoho Rengekyo. It is Myoho Rengekyo that is the true Buddha. Do you understand? The mm -hmm. Namyoho Rengekyo thus come one, the entity, and the law. Myoho Rengekyo are one and the same. Okay? That is what they're talking about. It's Myoho Rengekyo that is the true Buddha. This is what is described in the sutra as the thus come one's secret and his transcendental powers. The thus come one's secret refers to the entity of the Buddha's three bodies. Do we have that? That entity is us. And it refers to the true Buddha. Are you guys true Buddhas if you are Buddhas? Yeah. Yes, you are, because you preach the true law of Nam Myoho Rengekyo, right? Yeah. You're not provisional Buddhas. His transcendental powers refers to the functions of the three bodies, which you are eternally endowed with, he says. Mm -hmm. And it refers to provisional Buddhas. A common mortal is an entity of the three bodies, is an entity of the three bodies, and a true Buddha. A Buddha is a function of the three bodies and a provisional Buddha. He's talking about those examples that precede him. In that case, though it is thought that Chakyamuni Buddha possesses the three virtues of sovereign teacher and parent for the sake of all of us living beings, that is not so. On the contrary, it is common mortals who endow him with the three virtues. Mm -hmm. yeah. Cool, huh? Mm -hmm. The thus come one is explained clearly in Tintai's commentary as follows. The thus come one is a general designation for the Buddhas of the ten directions and the three existences for the two Buddhas, the three Buddhas, the true Buddha, and provisional Buddhas. The true Buddha here means common mortals, people of the nine worlds, whereas provisional Buddhas means Buddhas, Buddhas that appeared in sutras that preceded the lotus. However, because of the difference between ordinary people and Buddhas, that stems from the disparity between delusion and enlightenment, ordinary people are unaware that they are endowed with both the entity and functions of the three bodies. They are not aware that they are not provisional, but true Buddhas, exactly as they are. All phenomena in the sutra refers to the ten worlds and the true aspect to what they actually are. The true aspect is another name for Myoho Rengekyo. Hence, all phenomena are Myoho Rengekyo. Hells, displaying the, the form of hell, is its true aspect. When hell changes into the realm of hungry, hungry spirits, that is no longer the true form of hell. A Buddha displays the form of a Buddha, and a common mortal, that of a common mortal. The entities of all phenomena are entities of Myoho Rengekyo, however. So even though each one's reflecting its aspect, they're all entities because there's nothing that isn't. Do you understand? That's why you can manifest yourself as a Buddha of the three bodies, of the original state, because it's what everything is in the first place. The entities of all phenomena are entities of Myoho Rengekyo. That is the meaning of the true aspect of all phenomena. The true aspect of all phenomena is that everything is not Myoho Rengekyo. Tantai states that the profound principle of the true aspect is the originally inherent 
Myoho Rengeko, the original state. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. This interpretation identifies the phrase true aspect with the theoretical teaching and the originally inherent Myoho Rengeko with the essential teaching. Do you get it? Mm -hmm. You should ponder this interpretation deep in your heart. And if you don't know that it's here, you can't do that. That's why I'm reading it to you and saying, read it again and again and again and again and again. Okay? Although not worthy of the honor, I, Nichiren, was nevertheless the first to spread the mystic law entrusted to Bodhisattva's superior practices for propagation of the latter day of the law. I also was the first through only, though only Bodhisattva's superior practice is, practices is so empowered to inscribe the object of, de of devotion as the embodiment of Shakyamuni Buddha in the, from the remote past as revealed in the lifespan chapter of the essential teaching of many treasures Buddha who appeared when the treasure tower chapter of the theoretical teaching was preached and of the bodhisattvas of the earth who arrived with the emerging from the earth chapter. Do you understand? Okay. Though people may hate me, they cannot possibly the alt alter the fact of my enlightenment. And what is he saying there? Yeah, well, since hatred and jealousy abounds even during the time of the thus come one, so how much more so will it be after his passing? But he's, what he's also qualifying is that because of what I just said to you, what I, just under, what I understand and what I just expressed to you, mm -hmm. I don't care how much people hate me. They can't possibly alter the fact of my Buddhahood because that's the only reason I was able to do what I just did to you. Mm -hmm. Therefore, to have exiled me, somebody that really actually understands the true meaning of the sutra, Nitrin is to this remote island is, I believe, an offense that can never be ex expiated, even with the passing of countless kalpas. A passage from the simile and parable chapter reads, if I were to describe the punishments that fall on the persons who slander the sutra, I could, I could exhaust a kalpa and never come to an end. On the other hand, not even the wisdom of the Buddha can fathom the blessings that one will obtain by giving alms to Nitrin by, and by becoming his disciple and lay supporter. It must mean he's top dog, mm -hmm. frankly speaking, right? Mm -hmm. Because he's not talking about giving alms to Shakyamuni in that mm -hmm. regard, right? The sutra reads, the benefits he gains thereby will be such that even the Buddha wisdom could never finish calculating their extents. Nichiren alone took the lead in carrying out the task of the Bodhisattva of the earth. That's why he's qualifying to Sirenbo. Dude, it's, it's me. He may even be one of them, he says very modestly. I might even be a Bodhisattva of the earth myself. If Nichiren is to be counted among the Bodhisattvas of the earth, then so must his disciples and lay supporters. So Sirenbo, you must be a Bodhisattva of the earth too. Dude, we've got a club going here. The sutra states... If one of these good men or good women in the time after I passed into extinct, extinction is able to secretly expound the Lotus Sutra to one person, even one phrase of it, of it, then you should know that he or she is the envoy of the thus come one. He has been dispatched by the thus come one and carries out the thus come one's work. Who else but us can this possibly refer to? When praised highly by others, one feels that there is no hardship one cannot bear. Such is the courage that springs forth from words of praise. The votaries born in the latter day of the law who propagate the Lotus Sutra will encounter the three types of enemies who will cause them to be exiled and even condemn them to death. Yet Shakyamuni will, Buddha will enfold in his robe those who nonetheless persevere in propagating. Heavenly gods will make them offerings, support them with their shoulders and carry them on their backs. They possess great roots of goodness and deserve to be great leaders for all living beings. Thus extolled by Shakyamuni Buddha, many treasures and all the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas in the ten directions, the seven reigns of the heavenly deities and the five reigns of the earthly deities, the mother of the demon child and the ten demon daughters, the four heavenly kings, Brahma, Chakra, King Yama, the gods of the waters and the winds, the gods of the seas and the mountains, the thus come one, the Hebrew Chana, the Bodhisattva universal worthy, and Manju Sri, the gods of the sun and the moon. Thus praised by all have all these honorable ones, I Nitrin have been able to endure countless harsh trials. Because the ceremony said that only the people that could handle it would manifest. Those guys all said, I'll do it, I'll do it. He said, you couldn't hang. Do you understand? You remember that, right? Mm -hmm. He says, I, Nietzsche, have been able to endure countless trials. 
When praised, one does not consider one's personal risk. So he says, you know, I've been praised by all these dudes. I'm not offended by what I've had to endure. I'm happy to do it. He says, and when criticized, one can recklessly cause one's own ruin. Such is the way of common mortals. Now, no matter what, strive in faith. I'm almost there. Now, no matter what, strive in faith and be known as a votary of the Lotus Sutra and remain my disciple for the rest of your life. If you are of the same mind as Nitrin, you must be a bodhisattva of the earth. And if you are a bodhisattva of the earth, there is not the slightest doubt that you have been a disciple of Shakyamuni Buddha from the remote past, which is the eternal Buddha, the nam myoho renge thus come one. The sutra states, ever since the long distant past, I have been teaching and converting this multitude. There should be no discrimination among those who propagate the five characters of Myoho Rengekyo in the latter day of the law, be they men or women. Now, I mean, who's talking like that? Uh, were they not bodhisattvas of the earth, they could not chant the Daimoku. At first, only Nichiren chanted Nam Myoho Rengekyo, but then two, three, and a hundred followed, chanting and teaching others. Propagation will unfold this way in the future as well. Does this not signify emerge, emerging from the earth? At the time when the law has spread far and wide, the entire Japanese nation will chant nam myoho rengekyo as surely in a, as an arrow aimed at the earth cannot miss the target. But now you must build your reputation on the Lotus Sutra and give yourself up to it. At the ceremony in the air, when the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas of the Ten Directions gather together, the two Buddhas, Shakyamuni and Many Treasures, nodded in agreement. What they decided on was nothing other than the perpetuation of the law throughout the latter day. Many treasures, Buddha, had offered Shakyamuni Buddha a place beside him. And when they unfurled the banner of Myoho Rengeku, the two leaders of the entire multitude made their decision together. Could there have been anything false in their decision? Their ultimate purpose in meeting was to provide a way for all of us living beings to attain Buddhahood. Although I was not at the ceremony, on looking at the sutra, this is crystal clear. On the other hand, I may have been at the ceremony, but since I am a common mortal, it is beyond my power to know the past. There is no doubt, however, that in my present life, I am the votary of the Lotus Sutra, and that in the future, I will therefore reach the seat of enlightenment without fail. Judging from the past, judging the past from this point of view, I must have been at the ceremony in the air. And every one of you should understand He's saying those words for you to understand they absolutely pertain to you. Therefore, there can be no discontinuity between the three existences of past, present, and future. You're about to soften the earth now. All right? Because I view things this way, I feel immeasurable delight even though I am now in exile. Joy as well as sorrow moves us to tears. Tears express our feelings for both blessings and misfortune. The 1,000 arhats shed tears in memory of the Buddha, and in tears, Bodhisattva Manjushri chanted Myoho Rengekyo. From among those 1,000 arhats, the venerable Ananda replied in tears, this is what I heard. The tears of all others fell, wetting their inkstones, and they wrote Myoho Rengekyo, followed by, this is what I heard. I, Nichiren, now feel exactly as they did. I am now in exile because I spread the five and seven characters of Myoho Rengeko. So that's just qualifying that every time I said Myoho Rengeko, I was really saying Nam Myoho Rengeko. I spread this teaching because this is what I heard. Shakyamuni Buddha and many treasures left Myoho Rengeko for the, for the future and for all living beings in the country of Japan. I cannot hold back my tears when I think of the great persecution confronting me now or when I think of the joy of attaining Buddhahood in the future. Birds and crickets cry, but never shed tears. I, Nichiren, do not cry, but my tears flow ceaselessly. I shed my tears not for worldly affairs, but solely for the sake of the Lotus Sutra. So indeed, they must be tears of Amrita. The Nirvana Sutra states that while the tears one has shed in, dis in past existences, at the death of one's parents, brothers, sisters, wives, children, and other relatives, surpass the quantity of water in the four great seas, one weeps not a drop for the Buddhist teachings. One becomes a votary of the Lotus Sutra by virtue of one's practice in past existences. You didn't get there by accident. Whoever told you was telling you because you earned it to be told. It is karmic relationships 
that determine which among the many trees are made into images of the Buddha. It is also because of karma that some become statues of Buddhas of the provisional teachings. In this letter, do you understand what he's saying then? Mm -hmm. Because of your karma, you, you're my disciple. All right? In this letter, I have written my most important teachings. Grasp their meaning firmly and make them a part of your life. This is one of the first go shows that I really mastered. I really, if you haven't read this like a hundred times, you should. It's only five pages long. I'm serious. I've been doing, I've been reading this go show for 45 years. In this letter, I've written my most important teachings, grasp their meaning firmly. If he didn't really mean it that way, he wouldn't have said it. So he's telling you, and I'm not telling you to do that. He's telling you to do that. Do you understand? And make them a part of your life. Believe in the Gohansa, the supreme object of devotion in all of Jampadvipa. Be sure to strengthen your faith and receive the protection of Shakyamuni Mini Treasures and the Buddhas of the Ten Directions. Exert yourselves in the two ways of practice and study. Without practice and study, there can be no Buddhism. When he said that, he got my attention. That's what set me off on the course of study, this Gosho. You must not only persevere yourself, you must also teach others. So you can't master this stuff just, just so you can go to heaven, mm -hmm. right? The yeah. whole idea is you're mastering it for yourself, but in time, mm -hmm. you will have mastered it for everyone else you touch and affect and help become the Buddhas that they are. Both practice and study, though, arise from faith. Because like I said, that's what makes you chant. That's what makes everything work. Teach others to the best of your ability, even if it is only a single phrase, uh, a sentence or phrase, nam myoho renge kyo, nam myoho renge kyo, with my deep respect, Nichiren, postscript. I wrote, a I, I wrote before about the doctrines that have been handed down to me. Those I have revealed to you in this particular letter are very important. It is, not a is there not a mystic bond between us? Are you not the embodiment of one of the four bodhisattvas, including superior practices, who led the bodhisattvas of the earth in equal in number to the sands of the 60,000 Ganges rivers? There must be some profound reason for our relationship. Now, when he said that, I also read, he's talking to me. There must be some, okay, if, if you can say that to Sirenbo, you must be being also be able to say it to me if you were here to say it. It's the same thing. Do you understand? Okay, so he says, there must be some profound reason for our relationship. I have given you the teachings that concern myself, the fact that I am the Buddha of the latter day of the law. Nichiren may be one of the followers of the Bodhisattvas of the earth who are equal in number to the sands of the 60,000 Ganges rivers, for I have been chanting nam myoho renge -kyo out of my desire to guide all men and women in Japan. The sutra says, among these bodhisattvas were four leaders. The first was called su superior practices. The four bodhisattvas were the foremost leaders and guiding teachers. A bond of karma from the past has led you to become my disciple. A bond of karma from the past has led you to become my disciple. He's talking to you. Mm -hmm. By all means, keep this letter to yourself. Because if you say this stuff to people without faith, they're going to slander, and they may even become violent with you. I have therein committed to writing the doctrines of my own enlightenment. The things that I couldn't say to anybody else, Sirenbo, I'm saying to you, and I'm counting on you to maintain this, right? I will end here. Reply to Sirenbo. Although that's not the Gosho. Reply to Sirenbo. Okay? Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.